Max Morgan will kick it off. Reggie Akles is deep. Toe meets leather. Fair catch called for and made. Papa Johns is with us tonight, starting lineup. Tell me about this kid, A.T. Diego Pavia. Well, he was a state wrestling champ in high school, so he's got some toughness. He's got some moxie. He's really the lifeblood of this team, just a tough, physical, fearless runner. He's not afraid to stay in the pocket, but his legs he can scoot and elude and create out on the perimeter. And Liberty feels he is better throwing on the run than in the pocket. They'd like to keep him in the pocket. Jamani Jones is in the backfield. This is Jones over the right side. Good offensive line for New Mexico State. And he's out to about the 29-yard line. The Aggies offensively, they've got talent in the backfield. They'll rotate Jones, Star Thomas, and Monte Watkins. Yeah, McKaylen Young will add some of that too, but Thomas leads the running back room in rushing touchdowns and rushing yards this season. Averages about 10 touches per game both as a runner and a receiver. Pavia, quick throw to the sideline. That's Jonathan Brady up the sideline with the first down, and Brady's out of bounds at the 38-yard line. They're in a stack position to make sure that they can't get themselves jammed at the line of scrimmage. It allows for a free release, but that time it caught Liberty off guard. They run a bubble screen and move the sticks. And with the pass caught behind the line of scrimmage, you can block as a wide receiver across the line of scrimmage. Ball at the 39-yard line. First possession underway. Conference USA Championship game. Pavia rolling. This is where he's at his best. Fires it on the money. Caught. That's Brady again. He's right at the stick. He's got the first down. It's a gain of 10. This good defense for Liberty and a great linebacker in Tyron Dupree. Yeah, he's really a unicorn because he's a sixth-year senior that waited for his opportunity. He's been on this team a long time but didn't get a chance to play. Rich, all he's done is become one of the best leaders Jamie Chadwell's ever had and leads this team in tackles with 107 coming into tonight. Fastest running back they have, Monte Watkins, is in the backfield. Ball just shy of midfield. And this is Watkins, you can see the speed, finds a seam, has a first down, inside the 40, Brandon Bishop, the stop, that's 11 yards. New Mexico State really is a running back by committee team. Monty Watkins is the only player on this team that's had 100 plus rushing yards in a game, but he leads the Conference USA in yards per carry with over 10, and he just showed that speed there. They, I mean, that's, look, that's a great resume builder for the offensive line. The guys aren't getting hit. They're getting three yards before they even get touched. Pretty amazing. And we're watching New Mexico State milk the clock. That's part of their offensive philosophy. Brady in motion. Again, Watkins. And Dupree gets him after a gain of three. Hanging on to the football for both teams is at the top of the list. Four turnovers last week for New Mexico State in the win over Jacksonville State, but only 13 on the season. Yeah, they've done typically a pretty good job of taking care of the football, but you mentioned it against Jacksonville State. Two interceptions and two fumbles. Somehow, they won that ball game, turning it over as much as they did. If they do that against Liberty tonight, they'll lose this one. Impressive opening drive here for New Mexico State. Ball at the 36 of Liberty. Pavia, pressure, little screen, that's Jones, and Jones caught from behind, gets to the 30. We'll see where they mark it. I think he's going to be just shy of the first down. This should be third down and less than a yard. Diego Pavia's acting skills are pretty good here. Right before this play, he points to the left to signal to the receivers. That froze the defense's eyes a little bit. They come back and run a screen successfully here on the perimeter. They like to run plays early to get contact for Pavia. They feel like he's a better quarterback when he takes a pop or two. He hasn't been hit yet. Third and less than a yard. 
Jones, one of their biggest backs, 6'2", 225, and he slams inside the 25. That's a first down. One of the things you love about this team is how physical they are and the variance in the run packages that they bring. Keep your eye on number 19. The tight end right there is the lead blocker that had a great block that that's run. Tiava Sue was sitting on the field and Tony Sanchez, the wide receiver coach before the game's like, we love this dude, man. He's got a low center of gravity, but he can run. He's got some good hands. He's got a chance to play on Sundays if he keeps this up. 275, he's a Kiwi. Have a New Zealand transfer, Missouri and Utah State. First and 10. Inside the 25. And keep it on the ground. Great. No, it's the quarterback. It's Pavia. And he scores. Pavia sneaks through 25 yards. What an impressive start for the Aggies. This game started out just like the one in September did when New Mexico State started with the ball and scored on their first drive. It was the backfield motion of the fly motion that froze the defense. The bad eyes end up causing bad plays, and New Mexico State takes advantage of it, gets a touchdown there early through the heart of that defense. Point is up and good. Eight plays, 75 yards, almost five minutes off the clock. Diego Pavia. The Albuquerque native for New Mexico State. And it's 7-0 in this Conference USA Championship. If Liberty can respond offensively after their defense gave up a touchdown early. Ethan Albertson, an outstanding kicker. Aaron Bedgood. And Bedgood is across the 20. Let's bring Papa John's back and do some starting lineups here. Caden Salter has been a headache for the rest of Conference USA this year. He certainly has been. What's interesting, Rich, is he didn't win the job, the starting job, until about a week and a half before their opener. It was quite the competition, but the coaches told us he needed to work on his turnovers and mental errors, the missed assignments, and he did that. And it's the way that he graduated from his football intelligence and protecting the football that allowed him to get the start and a big reason why Liberty's been so successful this season. This is one of the most fun and complicated offenses you will find. And that first carry gets about a yard. And this offense got, I mean, there's guys flying all over the place. And C.J. Daniels is kind of the go-to Explosive receiver. Yeah, he's extremely explosive. Seventh in the FBS in yards per catch with 20.8. It's incredible. Only played about four games last year after leading the team back in 2021 with four touchdowns. Salter on the money. And a catch there. And that's C.J. Daniels. They like to find him. He was a huge factor in the first game that they played. But keep your eye tonight on number 16, Gabe Peterson. Coming off a huge game against Jacksonville State, had a sack and tied for the lead in the team with nine tackles. I think this is the matchup of the night. New Mexico State's defensive line against a very talented Liberty unit up front. They'll run some triple option. They'll throw the quick game in like they're doing here. Trayon Sibley with the catch. And that's a first down. Sibley had missed three games prior to last week with injuries. Struggles to bring that football down, but somehow is able to corral it and move the chains. And you mentioned that tempo, Rich. Liberty tries to keep defenses off balance by varying the speed of their operation. Incredibly hard offense to prepare for. Quinton Cooley and his first touch to the 44-yard line. They run the ball, and they run it better than anybody in the country. 295 yards per game. In their last two games, they ran for a combined 765 yards. It's pretty remarkable what they've done, and in fact, they're going to be the first non-military academy to lead the country in rushing since 2019 when Georgia Tech did it. And on second down, Cooley again to midfield. He's got the first down. 
watching Liberty, both their receivers, their tight ends, their offensive line, they're finishing their blocks, Rich. When you're an offensive lineman, there's kind of three phases. The contact power is phase one. The sustain is the middle part. That's phase two. But the coveted part is that phase three, and that's the finish. And Liberty looks like they're trying to do that here tonight. And that's why Cooley has got over 1,200 yards. Play action and a shot, a diving catch there. Daniels, outstanding. And Liberty is on the move. It was raining before the game. We saw the weather report, but this is what they do so well in that RPO game. The offensive line's firing off the football. It sucks the linebackers up and creates that window. The ball wasn't on target, but Daniels made Salter right. They have a deep game. They have a short game. They have the RPO. Salter, lots of time, fires. That's bed good with the catch. And up the sideline he goes, out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Another first down. New Mexico State doesn't blitz very often. And here the offensive line just does a great job. Look at that protection up front. Salter's back there eating sandwiches and cheesy grits and finally finds Bedgood out on the outside edge for an easy completion and first down. I think Jamie Chadwell is trying to get the officials' attention. I thought he's looking maybe at targeting, but there's no review. And this is Cooley, and Cooley is upended. Did he get in? Yes, touchdown! Late call. Certainly that will be reviewed, but that's 21 yards, and that's quite an answer. It's a very good answer. I want to take another look at this because I thought he went out of bounds before that ball crossed the plane. Now his hand touches the pylon, and that may be what the officials were taking a look at, but the ball has to cross the plane, and I don't think it does that here. No, it clearly doesn't in that shot, and it's hand on pylon. This should be reviewed. Nice job by Reggie Akles to unhinge there and get over and to give his defense a chance to get a stop the here. Touchdown is under further review. But man, I was down on the field before the game, Rich, and taking a look at Quentin Cooley, man, he is thick. He's like a Wendy's milkshake. This dude is yoked <laughs> and built and not interested in all in your arm tackles. <laughs> I like that. J.J. Durville with the uh, tackle for New Mexico State. Man, both Offenses have come out and just look really sharp. This is kind of the way their first game went, except Liberty fumbled on that first drive, and New Mexico was able to take advantage of that. But to your point, a really nice job of moving down the field using a nice blend of rushing and passing. And you see there that he's out of bounds and the ball has not broken the plane. You get the goal line extension possibly, but in any angle, any way we look at this, that ball did not break the plane, and I don't believe that this is going to be a touchdown. I believe it gets overturned, and it's going to be about six inches away from the goal line for Liberty to punch this one in. And the variety here, both teams running it well. Both quarterbacks were perfect on their opening drive. Pavia was three of three for New Mexico State. Salter was four of four on this drive for Liberty. Salter not nearly as accurate as Pavia early. He was successful, but you got to give this receiving core a lot of credit. There were some great catches here for the Flames on this first possession. Ron Hudson, our referee. After review, the ball carrier touched the pylon, which means he is therefore out of bounds. The ball was at the half yard line. It'll be first down Liberty at the half yard line. If he had the ball in that right hand, then he's then he's gold. Then, then it's it's confetti and, and the band's playing and everybody's happy. But this is what you love for. This is an offensive line, Rich, and again, we talked about it. It's a well-coached unit by Bill Durkin. It's the biggest O-line that Jamie Chadwell's ever had. And Liberty's been as successful as they've been this season, largely because of the guys up front. Cooley. This time he's in. Touchdown. And Liberty with an extra point will tie it up. There is a flag.
Again, this is the second time this year these two teams have met on this field. Liberty beat New Mexico State in week two. Yeah, neither team in that game. There is no foul for 12 players on the defense. Touchdown. In that game, red zone wasn't very good for either offense, both only going 50% for touchdowns. Liberty's pretty dang good. Second in the Conference USA at 75% touchdowns when they get inside the 20 and this is a great start for this offense that wants to do more of this all evening something to remember tonight New Mexico State has blocked two kicks and they almost got that one and it sneaks around the upright and it is good great start conference USA championship game two possessions two long touchdown drives seven seven with medical issues at time, time away from the game. But let me tell you, none of that phases him. He told us this week flat out to write him off at 62 years old is ridiculous. He said, find me a staff and a coach that has taken one of the worst programs to now 10 wins, a championship game, a bowl game. I don't know who's done that. Oh, look, it's an amazing, amazing turnaround. And a fair catch called for and made at the seven. You're exactly right about that, Amanda. Last drive. New Mexico State, AT. Well, it was a perfect balance of what you want. Run, play action, passing, getting things done. It was just nice, nicely balanced. They felt in rhythm. They felt controlled. They're blocking people. And I think the eye candy and dressing caught Liberty a little bit off guard. But this is typically what happens. These offenses have early success against each other. And then defenses start to make an adjustments like Liberty being in a three down look here. 25 yard line second touch for Diego Pavia by eye candy you're talking about formations a lot like Missouri or a Boise State a lot of formations and they run a lot of those plays from those formations and that's Pavia scrambling to the 30 Bazell made the stop for Liberty yeah he was trying to hit Jonathan Brady down the field but he was covered but again with Liberty only bringing three, the middle of that defense just got vacated, and Pavia took the free five yards. Brazil plays the joker position, and that's the, the name they have for the uh, rush end. And he's a good one. Start Thomas in the backfield, second and five. Pavia off play action. Now, this is the playbook they use. The Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator, said, we like to run some stuff to get him hit early because he <laughs> it seems like he, he plays better when that happens. Well, I wish you had to hit me at the top of the show during the open so that I could relax a little bit. But that's what happens, Rich, when you get jacked up and you're a player like Pavi, who's a state wrestling champ. Like, there's nowhere to hide on a wrestling mat, so he's not afraid of the competition. But sometimes guys get so amped up, they need the contact to kind of knock the cobwebs off and get them to focus. This is Thomas, and he's across the 40, out to the 42. Tyron Dupree made the stop. Sunday morning, 8 Eastern, get up, get ready. Latest highlights and analysis all leading up to NFL Week 13 action. That other pregame show on CBS Sports Network. Yeah, this is a little bit of a different front that Liberty's playing than we've seen them generally do. Three down linemen, they're bringing Joseph Carter up now. The linebacker on the line of scrimmage, but it's an odd look which completely changes the blocking responsibilities for the offensive line. And Thomas across midfield, gaping hole, offensive line clearing the way. Brandon Bishop made the stop. Man, keep your eye on Shiaz Pete, the left tackle here. Just does a nice job of covering his guy up and driving him and opening up that hole. That's the sustain, Rich. You just saw it there. The defender was trying to go the different way, but he didn't let him go, and that allowed the back to cut upside for the big game. They average over 200 yards a game on the ground, 205, 217 through the air. Yeah, this is a run-based, fundamentally sound offense, boy. And Thomas, another hole, and another first down. That's 11 more yards. 
What Mexico State's doing a nice job of, Rich, is running downhill. They're getting a full steam. And then when people get there, those arm tackles can't work because Star Thomas is already at full speed. Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator, so you're going to see all these running backs, and they're all different. Jamani Jones, Star Thomas, and, of course, Monte Watkins. We saw him on the last drive. This is Thomas in the backfield. And Tia Vasue, the giant tight end, is in the backfield with him. And he'll lead the way, and a great play there. Thomas is upended, and Liberty... C.J. Bazell, the Joker. Where's Bazell? He's right here. Keep an eye on him. This is how you defeat a block. This is a great matchup. They let him go, and he's able to split it. And then you get some help coming off that outside edge by Quentin Reese, the strong safety. And that's how you corral the run game. And now New Mexico State's behind the sticks. A great opportunity for Liberty here with first down success. Thomas in motion. Pavia looks his way, then goes deep for Brady, and it's defended well and incomplete. Preston Hodge on the coverage. Man, he was in his hip pocket. Hodge is saying, not on my watch, man. Good protection up front, a little bit of pressure in his face, but Hodge is playing that ball almost like an offensive receiver right there, trying to go up and make a play and get an interception. Couldn't come down with it. But now, this is a situation third long that Liberty covets. Avia pumps, scrambles, flicks, caught there! Hudson up the sideline! And a big play created by Pavia on the run. That was such good patience by Pavia. I thought he made a mistake. I thought if he was going to run, he should have took off right there. But he doesn't. I was like, no, no, no. But he had the patience. And Trent Hudson, who leads this team in touchdowns, made him right. That's his backyard football right there. And that's exactly what Liberty was afraid of. Skyler McGee told us, look, this dude outside, when he's on the move, he's a much more dangerous thrower. That's that confidence and belief, man. Go back to that Auburn game. That wasn't the fluke. Thomas. And he's down to the 13. That's a gain of about four. Verizon red zone. The touchdown average nationally when you get in the red zone is 62%. And New Mexico State is at 56%. Tim Beck, long time. Uh, Co-coach with Jerry Kill, was coached with him in a variety of places. They were both at TCU, kind of as uh, analysts, and Jerry Kill actually took over as the interim coach back in 2021. And they arrived here last year of like mind that they could turn around and do the impossible, and they've done it. Thomas trying the right side. Rich, you mentioned that success, and part of that is New Mexico State's ability to milk the clock. Look at that. That's probably going to be the last play of the first quarter, but Tim Beck told us we want to run the ball to shorten the game to help the defense. Yeah, look, I mean, this is the turnaround. And, and look, this doesn't even illustrate how, how bad they have been. I mean, they won 10 games this year. The last time they did that was 1960. We're going to have to make a decision, watch that play clock. Do they want to get a playoff before the quarter change or talk about what they want to do here on third down if they just let the clock go out? That's the first quarter. It's a free timeout. First time that Liberty played them. Jimmy Chadwell said that as well. Caden Stanton is in as an extra tight end. And a third down and short. Probably a play action. Little flip. It's caught. Tia Vasue, the Kiwi, into the end zone. Touchdown, New Mexico State. 6'3, 275 out of New Zealand. Great feet, great hands, and a score. And Rich, that's his first receiving touchdown of the entire season, and it came at the right time. In the red zone, off of play action, a boot. You get Pavia outside the pocket, and 19 gets the second touchdown of the game. The red zone efficiency was a critical deficiency for him the first time they played Liberty, but they've been on point here tonight. 
11 plays, 75 yards, six more minutes of clock. And Diego Javier. Two drives, two touchdowns. Liberty gets it back. It's 14-7, New Mexico. Have them sitting on the sideline, and I think they had one possession. So uh, that's a good thing. We're running the football pretty good. Uh, we just got to we got to get lined up on defense and and uh, play better. You know. Well, their offense has been great, but uh, neither defense has been able to make a stop. Liberty's had just one possession in this game. Bedgood from his goal line. A seam and out to the 26 yard line. Well, Rich, on the last drive, or the only one for Liberty all game, it was very balanced. Caden Salter was four for four, connecting on balls and his receivers, really helping him out. And then it was Quentin Cooley with those nice rushes, gets him down to the goal line, finishes the drive off. And Liberty almost looked unstoppable, but we heard Jerry Kill say it there. The best offense, or the best defense is a good offense. That can throw Liberty out of rhythm. Look at the ball control for New Mexico State. One thing they didn't show on that first drive was any triple option, and they run it, and they run it really well. On the ground here, Billy Lucas. Liberty will use a variety of running backs, and Lucas has 10 yards. And they like to run fast and use tempo to their advantage. They'll vary it. It won't be a breakneck speed where they're going as fast as they can. They'll sometimes muddle huddle. And defenses really struggle when it's kind of an asynchronous cadence that offenses run. To the 39. It's, a, it's an odd combination of tempo and ball control and time of possession eater because you don't say those words in the same sentence very often. No, and, and Liberty's built. I mean, when Jamie Chadwell was at Coastal Carolina, it was that Gulf Coast option. It was shotgun, but option principles with an ability to throw the ball downfield, and it's really hard to stop. Yeah, Salter almost fumbled that. And this is going to be a third down and about five as a gain of two. Yeah, we talked about that at the top of the show. Last week against UTEP, they had three. Elijah Smoot put one on the ground. Billy Lucas put one on the down. Nate Hampton put one on the ground. And right there, Salter, because of the ball being wet and it being a little cold, almost just put one on the ground as well. Ball security is going to be critical for the Flames here. Willie Korn and Newland Isaac are the co-offensive coordinators. They're down four. Salter to throw, a lot of time. Starts to scramble, makes a left turn, bangs across the 45, and has the first down. What makes him so dangerous as a runner, Rich, is how sudden he is. Watch him put his foot in the ground. Good protection up front, good coverage down the field, but boom, right there, he puts his foot in the ground and gets vertical and moves the sticks. Nose of the football, just shy of midfield. Second possession for Liberty. Quick shot to the sideline. Noah Frith, and up the field he gets. Inside the 35, down to the 33, and Liberty's moving again. There's a little bit of a busted coverage or some confusion on that side because two of the defensive backs went deep with the deep receiver, and that led Frith all alone underneath, and then finally, Selden's able to come up and get him out of bounds. A little bit of confusion on that back end for the Aggies there. This is a really good pass rush. 31 sacks for New Mexico State. Salter pulls it. Another quick throw. Caught there. Austin Henderson, one of the three tight ends you'll see tonight. New Mexico State's only had six interceptions on the season, but they almost got one there on the RPO. Ty Miller jumps, he's sitting waiting on it, and had he been a yard wider to his right, that might have been an interception. Caden Salter did not see Makai Miller there, but that ball got there and it was a nice completion. Salter is six of six for 72 yards. Billy Lucas, and he's gonna be short. This could be third down, 
in about a yard and a half. Andre Selden, one of the really good defensive backs for New Mexico State, made the stop. Yeah, he came off that outside edge, and when you watch defenses that have success against Jamie Chadwell's offenses, it's usually that edge pressure and getting their face, or getting in the face of the quarterback right off the snap. They're going to get the first down here inside the 17 yard line. Jordan Vincent, Billy Lucas again with a carry. Yeah, this is offensive line is doing a great job, and Xavier Gadlin there, the right guard wearing number 77 tonight, his normal jersey's number 73, wearing 77 in honor of Taj Boyd. Did a nice job of getting to that second level. And Durkin's got to be happy about that. Salter, again, lots of time, but off the mark there. Frith was the intended receiver. That's his first incompletion, second and ten. Yeah, Caden Salter there was a little frustrated. He was expecting something different. He's like, hey, what, what are you guys doing, man? Come on now. We're in the red zone, it's a championship game. Let's go. <laughs> Liberty is not real confident in their field goal game. So they get in this area here. They're just five of nine in field goals this year. Bed good in motion whistles. Yeah, New Mexico State took a timeout. They're frustrated. They weren't lined up again. The very thing that Jerry Kill talked Prime to Amanda to about. Timeout, New Mexico State. Their first of the half. This would be extended into a full media timeout. Second possession, and they have marched all the way down to the 16-yard line. Caden Salter's been outstanding tonight. Salter, this first time we've seen a little bit of this option, and he's down to the 10. This could bring up third down and about three. Really nice patience by him that time, waiting for the defensive players to declare where they were going and they zagged and he zigged and you see that big old smile they got themselves a makeable third down here Billy Lucas in the backfield ninth best in the country almost 50 percent on third down Lucas hit twice and he's short he's at the eight yard line Miles Rouser coming up and he had the first hit, and let's see, fourth down, it's almost fourth and two. This is the team that leads the country in rushing. It's a championship opportunity. They're not getting many possessions. The only call to here to make for Jamie Chadwells to go for it. A pitch, it's Vaughn Blue, and he dives forward. Let's see if he's got it. Keyshawn Elliott made the stop. Liberty says they have it. Keyshawn Elliott was there first, but he kind of missed his initial contact, and Blue was able to fall forward. I'm not on the field for a measurement. Maybe enough to be able to pick it up. You see he triggers right there, boom, but he misses the tackle. He leads with his shoulder and doesn't wrap up, and tackling was a real problem for New Mexico State the first time they played these guys. And give Blue credit. He kept that left leg above and that knee from going down. And that's the mark. Just eyeballing it looks like it's a first down. But once they stretch the chains, things can change. Be a big call in this game here. Ooh. Just got it. Well, hold on. Yes, they do. Man. New Mexico State started to celebrate. And the official with a delayed call, it is a first down. And Jerry Kill says, come on. <laughs> You're killing me. The ruling on the field is a first down. The play is under further review. All right, so it was as close as it was. If they move it back just an inch or two, they could lose this first down. 
it, its hand is that forearm hit that's the thing is the forearm hits the ball it's where the the ball is in his possession when he's first down right there there, there. Ooh. the hand can go down but soon as the forearm comes down that's where the ball is going to be so the officials very smartly are looking at this spot to make sure they got it right because football is a game of inches and it was about an inch that liberty got that first down have you seen enough to move the ball back any or not, change the spot not with these looks and these angles that we're seeing and because of that i think it's going to stand because there's not enough evidence there to confirm it nor to overturn it no one has a defensive stop in this game and we're midway through the second quarter it's 14 7. it's crazy we just saw salters first in completion on the night and we're you know here in the middle of the second quarter that's a look of concern from jamie caldwell he certainly doesn't look confident there does he now if you're if you're chadwell here and you here's the call after review, the ball carrier's elbow was down with the ball at the seven yard line. Therefore, he did not reach the line to gain. First down, wow. Mexico State. And that's why Chadwell was concerned. Timeout on the field. And that's why Chadwell is upset. 14 7. There's your defensive stop. First one of the game for Jerry Kill and New Mexico State sequence for New Mexico State and here's a look and it, maybe the best look in terms of spotting the football yeah I, I didn't think that they got this right but taking a look at this when his elbow goes down you see that football is right there on the seven yard line we were going back and forth during commercial but when we were able to freeze it right when his elbow went down it was pretty clear that that ball was at the seven yard line as tough of a call as that is, I think this officiating crew got it right. Mike Sams is the replay official. Conference USA crew, obviously, for a championship game. Pavia a throw, and that one blown up. Jonathan Brady, the catch, and he's back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's the first first down play that they ran to start the game, and Liberty was able to adjust to it. Yeah, you look, two touches, two touchdowns, lots of time off the clock. With 75 yards each. New Mexico State is in no hurry. Their defense got a huge stop. A turnover in the red zone is what championship seasons are made of. Can their offense respond and take advantage of it? Because Liberty won that first down rep there. Second down to 10. Pavia throws sideline over the head of Hudson. And incomplete and suddenly deep in their own territory. It's third down and 10. Got to give a lot of credit to this Liberty secondary. There's not been a whole lot of room to throw the football. Amarian Williams there with tight coverage. Liberty runs a lot of man coverage. Close middle cover one. Your guys got to be better than our guys. And right now, the Aggies are not. Let's see if Liberty brings pressure. Empty set. This is where Pavia's legs can come in handy. From his end zone, fires it. Crossing pattern broken up. Kobe Singleton, one of the best cover corners in the country. Yeah, he's a ball hawk, second in the conference with passes defended coming into tonight with 13. He's just in the hip pocket. No separation. He's got his arm around the waist, but he didn't even need to do that. And that's the second play in a row that we've seen New Mexico State's receivers have no room, which makes it really hard on Pavia to throw that football for a completion. That a way to respond for Liberty after the turnover. End over end kick. Lands at midfield. And then it rolls inside the 45. So after the defensive stop, it's a three and out. That's a 58-yard punt. And... Nice job by the special teams and Zach Haynes, the punter. 
Liberty gets the ball. But they play SMU tomorrow. If SMU beats Tulane and Liberty wins this game, most people feel that SMU won't be able to leapfrog Liberty in those standings, and Liberty would be in. Well, obviously, SMU, if they wall up Tulane, that might change the math, but we'll have to wait and see. First things first, if you're Liberty, you got to win this game. Salter, low throw, and was it caught or short hot? It was caught at the 49, nicely done by Noah Frith. Noah Frith is a big, tall drink of water. I saw him before the game, and taller than you think he is. He's 6'4", 205 pounds, and he used those long arms to haul in that off-target pass. Cooley and Bedgood in the backfield. There's the option, and that's Salter. And that's what makes these guys so unique. The best way to describe this offense, if Air Force were to marry Texas Tech and have a child, this is what the offense would look like. It's the golf spread option, and you have so many different options. And they were wanting to, to look at targeting. You see Cooley there. You see Bedgood saying, hey, that was possibly targeting because Caden Salter was giving himself up, which makes him a defenseless player. So any forcible contact to the head or neck area would be a foul. Salter looking, firing, downfield, caught there. Daniels out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Well, the Aggies receivers haven't been able to get any separation, but that certain wasn't the case with C.J. Daniels off of the regular play action. Beautiful time in the pocket and just lays up a pillow of a catch with a beautiful football along the sidelines. Completely turns around the safety there for a huge gain back in the red zone. And a great illustration of the variety of this offense. They run that triple, and then they run a drop back, gorgeous throw like that. And Salter trying to find his way to a hole, and he gets to about the seven. Let's check in with Amanda Garrett. Well, Rich, talking about Liberty quarterback Aiden Salter, coaches say he's done a 180 since last season, and a big reason he needed faith from his new coaches. Last season, Liberty rotated coaches a lot. Heading into this season, Jamie Chadwell says Salter was constantly looking over his shoulder. He was worried about making a mistake and getting benched. Well, Chadwell told him, look, you are our guy. If you make a mistake, we're going to make it together and fix it. Since then, he's been a different quarterback. Yeah, he's been an incredible quarterback for sure. This is Cooley, and Cooley his feet busts into the end zone. Touchdown, Liberty. The flames are lighting him up, Rich. Quentin Cooley, he's got such a low center of gravity, just running through arm tackles. That was a problem the first time they played him, and it was a problem there. Beautiful response by Liberty to give themselves a chance to tie this up. They are at times impossible to defend. Salter with a big throw to Daniels. And then Cooley, who embraces his inner bowling ball, the coaching staff told us, into the end zone. 14 apiece. Yeah, show me the college football playoff rankings this time of year. 14-14. Here you go, A.T. Well, there's a little bit of miscommunication, or they're trying to communicate, and you're going to see Keyshawn Elliott. They're going to break themselves out, and it just creates this complete big hole there. You have to be disciplined with your eyes. New Mexico State is not there, and that was one of their keys coming into the game. Don't let all that backfield action fool you, because at the end of the day, that was a split flow zone, a very basic play that got them out of position and led to the touchdown. Eagles is going to return this one, has a head of steam and has a hole, and he busts all the way out across the 35-yard line. Now we turn back to New Mexico State's offense and their quarterback, Diego Pavia. Yeah, after 19 plays and two touchdown drives to start the game, they stalled out on their last drive. But before that, it was a mix of Diego Pavia's legs and his innovation and creativity, keeping those drives going and finally 
he finds the big tight end, the thunder from down under, the Kiwi, <laughs> for the touchdown on the boot action. Ron Tiavasue. Now, what we saw, this is the same formation that we saw New Mexico State start its last drive and run a bubble screen. What's the wrinkle off of this? Little uh, lead option there. And McKaylin Young's first carry. He's the fourth running back to tote the rock so far. And he's got 12 yards and a first down. Beautiful change up by offensive coordinator Tim Beck there because, again, that, they've run two bubble screens out of that. Liberty was probably expecting that, but the naked pitch out was really successful there. And Beck has to feel good about that first play call on PN10. Liberty has used three different running backs. New Mexico State has used four. Keep them dudes fresh. Now they're twins, but look how far they are out. Might be a run up the middle here. Trying to clear out the box when you're in this formation many times. Young still in the backfield. Pavia, a little pump fake. That's a quarterback draw. Joseph Carter with the stop. They mark it at the 45-yard line of Liberty. And that's how formation and personnel can help you. When you line your receivers out, it opens up the box. This is just a quarterback lead draw where you have a running back, McKylan Young, that's the lead blocker, and now you're second in whatever you want off your call sheet. Javier is so tough. In junior college, he was a tight end, then a halfback, then a running back. And finally, they settled on quarterback. I mean, look at his pants all torn up already. <laughs> and all he did once they moved him to quarterback was win the dang national championship. Yes, in junior college. That's Young over the left side. That's a first down, and here's Amanda Guerra. Well, Rich, as you mentioned, Diego Pavia, not your average quarterback. Turns out one of his favorite words is no. It started when he was just five years old. He wanted to play football like his older brothers, but he had to be seven. So a year later, he convinced his mom to lie about his age so he could play. <laughs> After that, look, he went to school. In high school, he, was a, he had an offer to be a D1 wrestler. Told them no because he wanted to play football. When he finally got to New Mexico State, even Jerry Kill said, this doesn't look like like a quarterback but look at where he is now he said I want people to doubt me that's what makes me play better I like it when people tell me I can't do something that's great stuff Amanda and they, yeah they said look once he got the ball in his hand then we knew he was a quarterback Pavia to the 40 it's a gain of two Chris Bodie made the stop for Liberty Pavia was trying to change the play there and did, but Liberty was waiting on it. This is the place on the field where a lot of times coordinators will take shots, right? You're in between the 40s, you're running pretty good, but you want to do that more on first down than second and long here. Mexico State has to find a way to get its receivers some separation, so Pavia can push the ball downfield. Watkins in the backfield now. And this is Watkins. He's hit at the 40 by Joseph Carter at just a yard. So this is going to be a sizable third down in about seven. And that's the challenge. You run it twice on your first two downs and you're not successful. It puts yourself in a third and long situation. You look at Pavia's completion percentage when it's between third and seven and nine, this exact situation, he's only completing 46% of his balls. Chances are greater than not that this is gonna be an incompletion and a great stop for Liberty. But now they're gonna take a timeout and talk about it. Yeah, New Mexico State had a five receiver look and they'll take a timeout. Ram Trucks halftime report coming up. Brent Stover, Kevin Carter, Danny Cannell, Beanie Wells in the house. Get you all caught up on this game and uh, preview all the conference championships tomorrow. It's all coming up on the Ram Trucks halftime report. We are in Lynchburg, Virginia. This is beautiful Williams Stadium. And it's our first time on this campus. And I got to tell you, the athletic facilities here are Power Five worthy. The indoor practice facility, the basketball facility, football facility, 
Just incredible what they have here. Yeah, it's really nice. I circled the timeouts there because this is a really important third down. Liberty gets the ball back to start the second half. So if they can get a stop here, that becomes a double dip situation for them. New Mexico State wants to get the first down, bleed the clock, and end this half with a score. They're down seven, just inside the 40. Let's see if Liberty brings a blitz. Time for Pavia. Lots of time on the move. Firing down the field, broken up and incomplete. Hudson, the intended receiver. Amarian Williams makes another play. This was incredible. You take a look at the coverage. There's nowhere for Pavia to throw the football. These guys are up there. Then it becomes a scramble drill. But Amarian Williams is able to recover and at the last minute get his hand on that football and to prevent the reception. Liberty's defensive backs are playing outstanding tonight, and they have been the difference in this ball game when New Mexico State puts it in the air. That's a terrific look on our reverse camera. This is a great this look. This is one of the best defensive secondaries in the country. 20 interceptions. Skyler McGee. Their D coordinator said, you know what? Some years you just catch everything. And that's McGee right there. New Mexico State's going to take a delay or, and back it up five yards and punt it. Delay a game. Offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Yeah, and their punters, Zach Haynes, is really good. The and game clock will start on the snap. At the field position game, Rich, 43% of his punts end up inside the 20. What the Aggies want here to do now is to pin Liberty deep so that they've got to drive the length of the field in just under two minutes with those three timeouts. Rylan Green is the returner. There's the end over end kick. And this one's going to be inside the 15 at the 11. What a fun game this has been. The Conference USA Championship, 14 apiece. They get help from SMU, who takes on Tulane in the American Championship. They've got a great road to a New Year's Six Bowl. Well, if it's true what they say, you are the company you keep. Liberty's in pretty dang good company. What they want to do here, Rich, they've got three timeouts. They're trying to get this football in the end zone. Their kicking game isn't the strongest. So there's going to be some aggressive play calling to try to push this ball down the field. Salter play action quick throw there that's simply with the catch and he's wrestled down at the 23 it's a gain of 12 and a first down. And if you're New Mexico State you're not a heavy blitz team but in a situation like this if you get yourself in an advantageous third down situation you might have to dial up the heat because if you give Caden Salter and these receivers time they'll beat you. Sideline shot oh what a catch Daniels had contact he held it. And he got to the stick. Let's see where they mark him. I think it's to be just short. No, it is a first down. Man, Enough I almost thought down. Andre Selden could have intercepted that football. He went for the tackle, but he was right there when that ball got there. And he still almost missed the tackle. But man, two great plays to start this drive for the Flames. Minute and a half. Get him. Tough to get Gotta him. Make that. Salter to the sideline. And he's out of bounds. That's right on the stick. Just some nifty running by seven. New Mexico State, you've got to make that play if you want to get him down. First that's down. His elusiveness is just so hard to have an answer for somebody that's so much more athletic than anybody on the football field. You heard Jerry Kill saying his defense wasn't getting lined up. What do you see? They weren't getting lined up. They're confused about how they're supposed to match up. Something that the Flames are doing or the defensive calls and changes they made have rendered this defense confused. Salter, a little crossing pattern there by Frith. And he's knocked off his feet. Clock still running, approaching a minute. Liberty has all their timeouts. They're going to use one here. We'll take a 30-second timeout. Entertaining first half, Conference USA Championship, 14 apiece. Liberty and their fine quarterback, Caden Salter, moving the ball. Aaron Taylor, we've heard many coaches this year tell us about the importance of the middle eight. And right now, that's what Liberty's trying to win. Yes, yeah, certainly they want to get a score here in the last four minutes of this first half because they get the ball back to start the second half. 
These are the middle late periods of ball games that often determine outcomes, and Liberty's looking pretty good right now. Second and five. We haven't seen as much option as they've shown throughout the year. But what they've shown has been pretty darn good. Salter, again, lots of time. Same pattern. Flag is down. And a catch and escaping out of bounds is Billy Lucas. That's wonder, good for a first down, but let's wait on the flag. Wonder if it's defensive holding or interference here. It might be offensive. It's awfully physical down here on the near side of the field. Well, the flag sits at the 40 yard line of New Mexico State, so it was in the defensive secondary. Holding number eight defense 10 yard penalty previous spot automatic first down. It's Andre Selden right there gets beat off the snap and grabs him Ooh. right there with his left arm. And then lays on top of him. It was a great release by C.J. Daniels there, beating him right off the line of scrimmage. And eight had to grab him so that he wasn't running free. Let's take the first down. And it's at the 42-yard line. Minute six left. Liberty has two timeouts left. Salter all day fires it over the middle. That's Henderson. Second catch for him. Clock stops under two. First down starts with a ready for play. Yeah, Jerry Kill told us that he felt Andre Selden was the best corner, cover corner in this conference. They're targeting him now and having a lot of success. Salter to the sideline. Another nice catch. That's Fritt. This receiving room is standing out in this first half. They are pitching and catching and absolutely devastating. The Aggies rush defense and there's no pass rush rich. They were happy about the job and role that their defensive line could do, but they're not even getting close to Salter. The offensive line is winning. The receivers are winning and the Aggies are really having trouble finding a way to stop the flames. 13 of 14 is Salter 5 of 5 on this drive. Flushed flags Salter escapes fires it back of the end zone. And it's incomplete. There's two flags back of the 22. There's a lot of people down on the ground there. Just Holding number 53 offense 10 yard penalty remains second down. That's Jordan White the center got the towel on his back. He gets beat and gets slipped. It just does what we all do when we're beat, and that's grab cloth and fall down and hope you don't get caught. First penalty on Liberty. 42 seconds left. Two timeouts left. It could be a costly one because it tilts the playing field in the Aggies' favor. They don't have a lot of confidence in their field goal game. Just five of nine this year. Is this an opportunity to bring some heat? No, they play coverage. Salter outside the pocket. Trying to chase him down, and he fires it. It is caught, but it's caught out of bounds. Frith was on the sideline. It's an excellent job by a team that has had 31 sacks this year, the Aggies. Nate Dryling, the defensive coordinator, does a nice job. He's got a spy just sitting there watching. Miles Rouser is waiting. His job is to cover number seven, and he does an excellent job of that. So they rush four, but have a fifth in case Salter got outside the pocket. That was a really nice couple of downs here for the Aggies. One of the best pass rushes in this conference. And they're getting their butts blocked. Liberty is owning them up front. So Third and 13. Salter caught there. That's Frith. He escapes inside the 10, inside. The end zone. Oh, wait a minute. Ball's loose. New Mexico State says they have it. The officials have not made a call. There's been no whistle. He looked like he was in the end zone. New Mexico State raced away. The officials looked at each other and did nothing. Well, the officials often will let the play play itself out so that they can go back and review it because there was an immediate recovery of that fumble. 
So they're going to let the play play out so that they can go back and watch it. To me, it looked like the ball broke the plane and didn't come out until after it had crossed. So loud, he can't even make the announcement. The ruling on the field is the ball carrier had possession of the ball, broke the plane to the goal line, touchdown. And again, it was a dreaded missed tackle. And Frith, with those long arms, gets that ball out. Boom, it's a touchdown Ooh. right there. <laughs> and man, that's about as close as you can ever absolutely get but this call is right oh, now I'm saying man. break the plane it's the front of that white line and that ball certainly did that but this is again is as close as you can get clock operator please reset the game clock to 27 seconds 2 7 on the game clock please man Jordan Vincent and Dylan early trying their tails off to make a play Vincent it's his helmet that hits the ball that knocks it out from Frith. Early's helmet. But that ball crossed the plane, and I think that's a good call. But man, it doesn't get any closer than that, Rich. Eight plays, 89 yards. Beautiful drive and gives Liberty a chance to double dip. Because again, they get the ball back to start the second half. That's a heck of a swing there for the Flames. And that's the first part of winning the middle eight. A touchdown drive which leaves only 27 seconds on the first half clock. This receiver group is so good. Coaches told us coming into this that they felt that they matched up really well, that they liked their guys against the defensive backfield for New Mexico State, and they were going to challenge them. They were going to try them. They challenged the receivers to step up and make plays and give Caden Salter an opportunity to put the ball on him. And Noah Frith is becoming the star here tonight. Rich, coming into tonight, he only had 12 catches. In the first game they played, he had one catch for 29 yards. But he's quickly becoming the go-to target and been a big factor here in the first two quarters. Well, that holds that Liberty is not trailed at half, at least unless something happens in these last 27 seconds. Reggie. Akles is deep for New Mexico State. Oh, that Whoa. ball hit him. And it's a loose ball. New Mexico State has it. But here's the deal. This is really good field position for the Aggies. I thought maybe they'd want to be conservative. But remember, they're trying to get into field goal range to get some points. But this was almost an absolute disaster. Is that football hit Dion Wilson or maybe Jamani Jones? Number three, the running back. Same number, but great job of fielding that ball and avoiding disaster there. All right, New Mexico State. Let's see what you can do in 25 seconds. They've only got one timeout, so they're going to have to be flawless here with only 25 seconds. The yeah. play clock will stop if they get a first down. So if you throw over the middle, it's got to be at least 10 yards. Javier throws to the sideline, caught there. And out of bounds, not at first down, but it will stop the clock right at midfield. That's typically what it is you want to do is to work the edges. They're about 15 yards away from an ideal target line from Ethan Albertson, who I watched in pregame warmups. He struggled a couple times with the longer kicks. Second and two, blitz comes. Pavia stands tall, back shoulder throw on the money. And caught there. That's Bryce Childress with the catch at the 33. This was a beautiful job. Pavia going through his reads. Puts that ball on the money. The receiver does a great job of coming back to it. Bryce Childress and Pavia. Beautiful there. And now in field goal range. 15 seconds left. See if they take a shot to the end zone. Pavia, man open. Caught. That's Fapel. Clock stops. They move the change, but they might want to burn that timeout. Or and they clock do. it, yep. And this brings up a really interesting eight seconds. Timeout. New Mexico State, their third and final of the half. 
This would be a 30 second timeout. Donovan Fapel was open for a long time, way sooner than that, but then just turns around. Liberty had kind of fanned themselves out. He's sitting there, he wants the ball right there so he can catch and run and have an opportunity. But it took Pavia some time to work his eyes back over, but he still found the completion. Enough time to take a shot. Absolutely. You got five seconds per play, but with no timeout, it's got to be in the end zone. Remember, this is a team that has intercepted the ball 20 times, and two of those interceptions were of Pavia when he was here in week two. I might have almost considered trying to clock it there, but if you, you're not sharp on that, it burns too much time. Probably a really good use of the timeout here, but you've got to put this ball in the end zone or catch it and get out of bounds immediately. Eight seconds to work with. Pavia fires. End zone caught! That's Hudson! And that's a touchdown! Wow! This is unbelievable, man. Both of these teams are fighting so hard. New Mexico State struggled all evening in these first 30 minutes, Rich, to get any sort of separation. They go to the back shoulder fade game on that drive multiple times and get a touchdown to possibly score this thing up right before halftime. They had 25 seconds to work with. Time on that drive. 22 seconds it was the kickoff that they were just trying to dribble down the field so that there was no chance of a return because of the healthy respect that they had that gave them great field position and pavia puts the ball right where trent hudson can go and get it and he's the team leader in receiving touchdowns for a reason plays this ball perfectly yes he pushed off there but that's the game out there on the edge, and New Mexico State did it beautifully. This is what you want in a championship game, Rich. It's a heavyweight fight. Liberty, the way that they've responded, the way their defense has been playing, but that's who these teams are. Nobody gives these teams a chance. New Mexico State, who wants that job if you're Cherry Kill? And here they are in the championship game. Before Jerry Kill arrived on the scene last year, New Mexico State had been to one bowl in 60 years. 60 years. One bowl. Jerry Kill shows up. They're going to their second bowl in his second year. It's amazing. He took the worst program in college football and possibly made them a champion. Short kick. And I believe a fair catch was called for. Once you signal, you can't do the return. He had a really nice run at Minnesota. Breathe life into that program. Number 82 of the return team gave a fair catch signal. Therefore, the ball is dead where it was caught. Please reset. Game clock is correct. Thank you. And obviously last year, they went 1-5 and five to start the yeah. year last year. They've won 16 of their last 20 games overall. Rich, but he was clear about last year's team really setting the tone. He said he'd never have a team that will get the most out of them like he did last year, and that really set them up to be successful here in 2023. What a half of football in the Conference USA championship game. 21-21, New Mexico State, Liberty. After the break, Brent Stover and the gang in New York, you're watching College Football, CBS Sports Network. And they both have hurt the other on the grounds. Yeah, it's interesting. New Mexico State got away from the run a little bit. I'd expect them to get back to that here in the second half. And can the Aggies defensive line get some pressure? It's a short kick, and we go down to the sideline. Amanda Guerra 
Well, Rich, Jamie Chad will not please with his defense after they gave up that touchdown just before halftime. He said, we on defense, we've got to stop worrying about what the Aggies are doing on offense. I said, well, what do you mean by that? He said, we have a lot of finger pointing going on right now on defense. These guys are making excuses. They cannot do that. As far as New Mexico State and Jerry Kill, his focus on defense as well. He says, with the way each of these quarterbacks are playing right now, whoever gets the stop is going to win. He says, they are going to change things up regarding their schemes. He told his team, you have one half to win a championship, and they're not going to give it to you. All right, thank you, Amanda. Salts are going deep. First place, second half, and it's incomplete. Been good. And how about Keyshawn Elliott carrying the receiver all the way down the field? That's a will linebacker. That's a mismatch. That's the matchup you want. The ball hits Bedgood in the hands. Elliott's right there. He tries to get his hand on his hand, and he times it perfectly. Liberty going for the knockout blow earlier, but the leader of this defense comes through. Elliott just a sophomore. Salter, quick throw. Daniels with the catch, breaks a tackle. Makes a move. Midfield, 40, 30. Daniels sideline, 10, and he's in! Flags are down after the score. C.J. Daniels. Seventy two yards. Not surprised that Liberty goes back. Now, remember, Rich, this is the nation's leading rushing team, but they open the second half with two deep shots and hit on the second. Illegal block in the back. Number 21, offense. 10 yard penalty for oh. First down. The flag came. Well after he was in the end zone, so a late flag is going to take the score away. That is a crusher. That's on Trayon Sibley, who missed the three games prior to last week's with injury. You see him there in the very left of the screen, just a foolish penalty. Pushes down Jordan Vincent unnecessarily and takes points off the board. A crucial mistake here to start the third quarter. And it clearly was a push in the back, and it obviously wouldn't have affected the touchdown. But that doesn't mean it's not a penalty. Liberty struggled with penalties this year, Rich. They're 117th in penalty yards per game with 64. But depending on how this game ends up. Please reset the game clock to 14 minutes, 30 seconds. The clock will start on the snap. And, and this is part of that frustration that Jamie Chadwell was talking about on the defensive side. Now you've got boneheaded, unforced errors. That's the way you lose ball games. That's not championship level play. And Jamie Chadwell can't be happy. Well, they're in the red zone. Let's see if they can stick it in. Bedwell straight ahead. And down he goes. Verizon red zone. How is Liberty in the red zone this year? And tonight, four trips, three touchdowns. That's 75%. That's well over the nation's average, which sits about 62%. I like the demeanor there with the coach talking to him, saying, hey, man, don't worry about it. Just be smart. Don't panic. We're in this game. Emotions run high. There's a lot, a lot riding on this game for both of these teams. Cooley. Man, he is tough to bring down. Has the first down. Jordan Vincent finally gets him to the ground. Rich, what set this up? was a missed tackle that was the big play down the field and there's another one there in the hole by Keyshawn Elliott he triggers quickly but the missed tackles that plagued them the first time they played the Flames are showing up here again Cooley 5'7 210 still Liberty. in the backfield let that offensive line eat Sibley in motion Cooley diving and he's in now the touchdown
take a look at this. Cooley puts his hand down, which he can do in that extra step and that extra effort. Just tremendous balance. We talked about his low center of gravity. The bottom and the palm of your hand can touch to keep yourself elevated. He got that last foot down and was able to spring across for the score. Point is good. You saw Trayon Sibley there right before you saw Cooley. Three touchdowns, 56 yards on eight carries. And the Wake Forest transfer in the end zone. Liberty up 28 21. Today's leading rusher is putting on an absolute clinic tonight and doing it where it matters most, which is in the red zone, Rich. He's got three touchdowns tonight. That's the second week in a row he did that because he did it last week against UTEP. And New Mexico State, which is third in this conference in stopping the run, has no answer for 20. Yeah, you see those three touchdowns that ties his career high. That high was set last week against UTEP when he had three that week. So he's had six rushing touchdowns in these last two weeks. Not bad for old number 20 there. It's Max Morgan, the putter, who kicks it off. And it lands. It takes a left turn. It goes out of bounds. Boy, that one went out of bounds at the half-yard line, and that's going to cost Liberty some pretty good yardage. Free kick out of bounds, number 37, kicking team. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line, first down. That's the second drive in a row that they're going to start with good field position. We summon the duck. Championship game duck tonight. Both starting quarterbacks tonight's game have a chance to pass for 3,000, run for 1,000 who is the only player in FBS history to accomplish this twice. That is our Aflac trivia question. I got that one real wrong. Thought I was pretty certain. All right, New Mexico State start this drive off run in the football. That's what they did in the first half early. They turned to the air for that last drive. It got them a touchdown. There's your comparison this season. And you can see, and look, bowl games, they're both headed to a bowl game so they can add to their totals in the postseason. It's just pretty remarkable, but both of them have done running similar style offenses. Both have the ability to extend and escape on pass plays, but the designed run game has been very fruitful for them as well. Bazell, C.J. Bazell. Bazell triggered off that outside edge, and you've got to have some sort of counter to be able to take advantage of that. He just gets right in the hip pocket of the left tackle, and there's nobody there and just runs down. Jamani Jones from the backside, and now it's third and forever. Javier. Running out of time, looking downfield. Man wide open, and he bounced it to him. Bellamy had the first down. He had no one near him. And Pavia, feeling the pressure, could not get it to him. And Bellamy's frustrated. The first time these guys played, he led the team with three catches for 74 yards. He's running the dig, and he's open for a long time. But Pavia got kind of happy feet and just one hops the football to him. And another three and out, the second of the game for New Mexico State immediately after Liberty drove down the field at will. Haynes with the punt, Green with the return, and it doesn't last very long. 53 yards on the punt. Ah, Rich, we were going to go to break, but there's some laundry on the field that we should attend to first. That's right. Seems to be getting a little chippy down there. Guys getting thrown down and taking shots on the ground. See what this call is, but seems like the intensity is ratcheting up. During the kick, personal foul, face mask, number two, kicking team. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the run. First down, Liberty, timeout on the field. They're going to get the football right around the 36, 28 21. Liberty up in this champion 12 championship. 
Washington has a 10-3 lead second quarter. Of course, Big Ten Championship. Iowa, decided underdogs. ACC Championship, Florida State, perfect season on the line. Yeah, but Tate Rotomaker, their backup quarterback, is questionable for that game, which means their third place starter could go. And how about this is the game that everybody in this stadium wants to see is Tulane against SMU. But, of course, the SEC Championship, if Alabama can find a way to beat Georgia, Boy, oh boy, buckle your junk. It's going to get fun for the committee. For Easter tomorrow on CBS SEC Championship. That's Bedfield has a blocker up the sideline. Excuse me, bed good up the field. <laughs> yeah, we were talking at halftime, or excuse me, a commercial, Rich, about how this really feels like a crucial drive for New Mexico State because the last three drives, Liberty has driven on them at will. They're missing tackles. They're killing them with chunk plays. This would be a great time if you're an Aggies fan to get a turnover. And if you're Liberty, you want to get up two scores here and try to put this game away. That's a pitch. Bed good again. This is a guy that thought he was done with college football after last year at Coastal Carolina. He walked away, didn't even play in their bowl game. New Mexico State is shell-shocked. It's just a beautiful job, Rich. You were talking about the triple option. Well, they finally go back to it. The Aggies can't get off blocks. They're blocking well on the perimeter. They're not tackling well inside. And Liberty is marching effortlessly here. This is one of the best big play teams in college football. They lead the nation in plays over 30 yards. They have two of them tonight. That one was for 24. Blitz comes. So oh, bubbled it, and Lucas was right there. I don't know if Lucas caused the fumble, but he was the guy that held on to it. You see, Caden Salter was not happy there. That's the second time that the exchange was possibly muffed. He wanted to be an RPO, but then Billy Lucas comes from the backside, and that clearly wasn't a clean operation, but disaster averted there. And little things like that can now give the Aggies a chance with a second and long situation here. Another negative play. We've only had a couple of those all evening. Yeah, and that's the first one for Liberty. Timeout. Liberty, their first of the half. This would be a 30 second timeout. And so Liberty calls the timeout. Jamie Chadwell has had a long road to get here. I mean, man, he started at the very bottom, a quarterback at East Tennessee State, assistant at Delta State, North Greenville, head coach starts rolling at both those places. Charleston Southern, four years in FCS, five years at Coastal Carolina. And look at the, the, the records as a head coach at those places. And of course, Coastal Carolina, they were a, a fun team to watch. And he's, he's brought this unique offense that he's picked up along the way. And he was a college quarterback, and their offensive coordinator came from Air Force, Paul Hamilton, when he was at East Tennessee State. That's where he got that triple option. He combined it with the West Coast passing game back then, then added shotgun, and then RPOs, and then the quick passing game. And along the way, so it's like cooking for the first time. He said, I, you know, look, you're going to mess up a lot, and he did, but he found some recipes that really worked. It's Billy Lucas on the carry to the 20. That's two wins in a row, and that time by the defensive line of the Aggies, that's really been the position group that I think has been the quietest tonight that I was expecting to give some problems for Liberty, but that offensive line has done a great job as we take a look at Gabe Peterson there. Did a nice job on that last play defeating his block and making the tackle. Time of possession is almost even, but not total yardage. Yeah, these last three drives from Liberty may have been a clinic. And there, once again, the Aggies struggling to line up. They're down in eight. Salter, end zone, caught! Touchdown, Daniels! Marvelous catch! Rich, when you're in or near the red zone, it's not as much about plays as it is players. Just a tremendous job by C.J. Daniels going up to high point that football. He's six foot two, playing against the five foot eight Andre Selden. 
and he made that look easy. First double digit lead of the ball game. Extra point is up and good. Caden Salter, 17 to 20, 289. Second touchdown. Daniels and Frith, the two wide receivers. That's quite a catch. And Liberty, 35 21. He has, and that's been, they've been confused, not being able to line up. We talked about it at halftime. Amanda heard from Jerry Kill. It's like, we don't know what we're doing. They get the ball off, then you take a look down here. It's man coverage at the bottom. And Andre Selden, who Coach Kill called the best cover corner in the conference, is getting absolutely torched by C.J. Daniels. Now, he's the boundary corner, which is where they put their best corner because they have to be one-on-one. -on -one. But whether it's skill players on the perimeter or at the line of scrimmage, Liberty is really starting to take over here. These two teams have traded leads. It's been tied most of the way. New Mexico State blinks first. And Liberty's up by two scores. Bring the duck back. Our Affleck. trivia question. Both starting quarterbacks have a chance to pass for 3,000, rush for 1,000. Who's the only player in FBS history to accomplish this twice? Lamar Jackson. 2016 2017 and it just happened. I was so disappointed in myself that I didn't get that but you didn't know it either. No. Jackson Jackson is no joke man. He's still no joke doing what he did at Louisville in the NFL. Aggies now trying to move the football and cut into the lead. Pavia rolling firing up the sideline. That's a catch. to the house 75 yards well that's an answer <laughs> liberty fans can't believe it er, my, er. what happened there they've struggled to beat man coverage all night and they run a wheel route out of the backfield the defensive back misplays it to get it misplays it Miss Plazing, man, my lips get in the way. And Jonathan Brady takes it to the house. That's it, baby. That's something they haven't been able to do all night, but a dang good response by the Aggies. <laughs> Their last two touchdown drives have lasted 22 seconds and 12 seconds. It's like they flip flop rolls. New Mexico State has been the one trying to bleed the clock, but you get Pavia outside of the pocket and you got receivers going up to get the football with a championship on the line went up and smoke in about 12 seconds man keep your eye right here just gonna run a little wheel route Preston Hodge is beautiful in coverage but it looked like he was trying to play the football he's got his hands up there like hey where's my help at and the speed of Jonathan Brady just takes it over and he's telling the crowd to be quiet we ain't gonna go away so easily remember Rich this is a team that boat raced Auburn they beat them like they stole something they've got a lot of heart and take a look it's been all offense all night for both of these teams especially in the last two drives 75 yard touchdown pass ties a conference USA championship game record Chris Robinson to D'Angelo Antoine and 2019 for FAU and Taylor McCarg. What? Our Taylor McCarg. What up, T? Jordan Taylor for Rice in 2013. <laughs> On to New York, Brent Stover for this update. Brent? Guys, Pac-12 title game. Michael Penix Jr. shuffles it to Jeremy Bernard for the Washington touchdown. It's Oregon's largest deficit of the season, down 17-3 in the second. Boy, oh boy, that's a, that's a win for the committee if one of the undefeateds can stay in there. But Oregon's built to be able to come back and close that deficit. But hats off to Kalen DeBoer and those Washington Huskies. They've had a great season. That stadium hosts two championship games in less than 24 hours, right? Mountain West tomorrow. Salter has had time all night. Pump fake, dangerous in the open field. Races across midfield. Salter sliding is down at the 41-yard line. This guy is dynamite. When it rains, it pours. This was pretty good coverage by New Mexico State, but there's no pressure. Salter running around just trying to buy himself time. There's no pursuit, and then he just becomes a better athlete that's faster than the other team. 
27 yards and a first down at the New Mexico State 44. And a short run by Cooley. Sone Apiu making the tackle. Yeah, Apiu did a nice job there, but take a look at these second half possessions, man. And that's four in a row for this team. After they stalled out and turned the ball over in the red zone on downs, they've been lights out. Largely because of that dude right there, man. Seven is Superman right now. Dead good in motion. Play action. Salter was going to throw it to him. Looks at him again. Scrambles. Breaks a tackle. Stumbles and is down. Ah, ho hum. Another 16 yards. Don Wilson made the stop. Jordan Robinson right here almost gets himself home, but just misses the jersey of Caden Salter. And it's been a night of misses and missed tackles for the guys in white. They're going to go back and watch the film of how close they were and feel sick to their stomach. But you know what erases that, Rich? A turnover. The Aggies can get one of those. They get themselves right back in this bad boy. Cooley has a big lane and rolls himself for 13 yards to the 15, first and 10 in the red zone for Liberty. Football oftentimes is about attitude. It's about belief. It's about swag. It's about confidence. When you watch Liberty, particularly this guy, Quentin Cooley, they're feeling it. They're getting lathered up. And what that starts to do is break the will of the opponent New Mexico State's got to find a way to bow their neck and get a stop here. Cooley, not much there. Back to the line of scrimmage, down to Amanda Guerra. Well, Rich, I was able to talk to Quentin Cooley after he scored that last touchdown. I said, look, you got a lot of nicknames, a bull, bowling ball. What do your teammates call you? He goes, oh, baby, I am a bowling ball. I knock down those pins. I keep getting strikes. But on a serious note, when it comes to Cooley, he said early on in the season, he could tell his team had the recipe for success, but he felt like they were letting off the gas at times. He, so he's a leader. He relayed that message to the team both verbally and by example. And by all means, they keep Bowling strikes, I guess you're going to say. Yeah, well, that throw by Salter is over his head. He, uh, he's got six touchdowns in his last two games. And, yeah, he's, he has embraced his inner bowling ball. Man, when they're trying to tackle him, it's like that bowling ball's covered in vegetable oil or something, man. He's just so hard to bring down. Got that low center of gravity. And here's an opportunity for New Mexico State. It's third and ten, and obviously... Liberty is in field goal range. But New Mexico State needs to, to keep him out of the end zone. Liberty, so great in the red zone. Watch the play clock. And they call a timeout. Timeout. Liberty, their second of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout. Now, Liberty was frustrated there because of the substitution, the official wouldn't get off the ball because Liberty had made an adjustment and substituted personnel, which gives, by rule, New Mexico State the ability to do that. But it's on the offense to be able to make those substitutions quickly. And what a lot of defenses do is make those substitutions late. Right there, you should have snapped the ball. If you're the center, Jordan White, that's a free play there because of the defender being in the neutral zone. I don't think I've ever seen a quarterback start the hand clap, which starts the sequence for the snap. He, he was the watching official, the clock. While the official was standing right there from the center. And remember, they had to burn another timeout because of the play clock, and that's when Jamie Chadwell was going over and pointing to Caden Salter. So Salter was trying to do the right thing, but now they've only got one timeout in a game that's been going back and forth. They're down 10. Got to get just inside the five. Watch his legs. Stunt coming up the middle. He avoids that. Scrambles. Sideline. And knocked out of bounds. And so New Mexico State is going to force Liberty's hand here and a field goal. That's the stop that the Aggies had to have. That is outstanding that they are able to get themselves off of the football field here because of how good Liberty is in the red zone. This is momentum. This is a four-point swing. And remember, Liberty's not the best at kicking these things. 
It wasn't a sack, but it was a pressure, and that put everything in motion. 31 yards, Nick Brown. His longest is 41. And Brown, oh, it went over the upright. He missed it. What a huge stop for the Aggies. Chadwell says, wait a minute, that went over the upright. But the official looking straight up the bar had it wide. Yeah, you, the official stand under the bar to look straight up. It can go over, but it's got to go over inside. That's why they stay underneath. And if you extended that bar another 50 feet, they have to make a determination of whether or not it would have went through, meaning between the uprights. And clearly that one wasn't. And they called it a missed field goal. The fans have watched it up on the... Uh, giant replay screen but when you have an official looking straight up the bar and you can kind of see that ball on the outside you can hear the fan reaction yeah Nick Brown's only five for nine of field goals this season and that's the stop that New Mexico State wanted that's twice in the red zone Liberty comes away without any points and now it's up to the Aggies to see if they can respond and this is where you have to keep your composure, man. Emotions are flying. You start to get frustrated. But this is where team culture comes in. This is where belief comes in. This is where your leadership has to show up. And that's not easy to do in the age of the transfer portal. But that's exactly what both these teams have to do here. Blaze Berlowitz, who's listed third on the depth chart, is a quarterback. Berlowitz is going to throw. He's going to throw it deep. This is Fapel in a crowd, and it's incomplete. That is a really interesting turn of events. Berlowitz is a freshman, and he underthrows this football. We have had Donovan no Fapel was open there, but because the ball floated, it allowed the defense to recover. Diego Pavia, we've had no indication of an injury. But it's Berlowitz, a freshman out of Oklahoma. Second and ten. Blitz is coming on the young quarterback. He's got a man open. That's Hudson with the catch. Hudson at midfield is wrestled down. Flags follow. It's going to be a face mask. Fifteen more to follow. Man, what an interesting turn of events. You got your third stringer out there. Throwing the ball deep on back-to-back -back plays. Personal foul, face mask, number 26, defense. 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. As good as Liberty's been all season, they're one of the worst teams in the country for penalties. 117th last week against UTEP, eight of them for 56 yards. And this just extends a huge play by Trent Hudson and gets them inside field goal range with a fresh set of downs. Now Eli Stowers is in, and Berlowitz is in as well. He's behind Stowers, who takes the pitch, flips it back to Berlowitz, loads up, gets hammered, caught there at the 18, Hudson. My goodness. Deep in the bag of tricks. Man. I didn't think this play had a shot. It was taking so long to develop. It's just a reverse pass, but because both quarterbacks are on the field, he throws this ball on and out, and it catches Liberty off guard and takes a shot when he releases the football. But Trent Hudson is becoming the go-to hot hand. Again, he leads the team in touchdown receptions and Pavia's inner elbow of his throwing arm being attended to. He had nine touchdowns. Hudson had a spectacular one to end the first half. Berlowitz in shotgun. Watkins on the edge. Caught from behind, but not before a, a nice gain of about five yards. Oh, man. You see C.J. Bazell's grabbing the inside of his leg there. Timeout on the field for an injury to the defense. What a turn of events here. First, it's the missed field goal by a foot or two. Then Pavia is on the sideline. You've got Berlowitz who comes in. And New Mexico State 
is in the red zone. They're facing second down and about six. Hard to see what happens there, but he grabs his area where his hip flexors are. Not feeling so good. CJ Bazil's Bazell's been such a factor off the backside edge. I'm surprised that New Mexico hasn't run any bootlegs or done anything to take advantage of how hard he's crashing off the outside edge. Remember the I mean the last time we saw Diego Pavia throw a football, it was this play, and this was a huge play. They were down by two touchdowns. Pavia throws it. And it's a 75-yard touchdown, and there was nothing, no indication. But that elbow area is obviously bothering him. He's been getting attention to it. And Berlowitz. And the shotgun. Second down. Rolling, throwing, and it's caught. And that's Cordell David. Let's see where he's out of bounds. It's not enough for the first down. This will be a third down. And about four. It's a big task right now for offensive play caller Tim Beck to get Blaze Berlowitz, the number three quarterback on the depth chart, some plays here that he's confident in, that he knows how to execute. And this one's coming in late. Again, there's some confusion there. These are situations where you want your quarterback to be relaxed. Red zone, we've talked about it, often determine outcomes, and here's one on third down that's huge. He has not thrown a pass all season long until tonight, until this drive. Little fake, looking, throwing end zone, touchdown! Hudson, third string quarterback, no problem. A defensive stop and a huge drive and a chance to tie it for New Mexico State. This is just an RPO with a beautiful look off of play action. Tim Beck with the call of the game so far gets everybody on Liberty's defense's eyes to think that they were trying to run a perimeter run and hit him with the dagger. And Hudson comes through once again to tie his bad boy up. Should we be surprised with a name like Blaze Berlowitz coming no, off the bench? Not at all. They're going to fake like they're going to do a toss to the outside, and that's going to open up Hudson to come to the inside. But look at Berlowitz. He's got to hold the ball. He wants to throw it right there, but he can't. So he waits for Hudson to find the second open window and just lays up a beautiful loaf of bread, and Hudson comes down with it for the tug. Comes in cold, and in the biggest game of the year, in the biggest moment, He's four of five on the drive, 61 yards and a touchdown. And Pavia, the first to greet him on the sideline. And that's who this New Mexico State team is, Rich. Right? Nobody wanted Jerry Kill. Nobody wanted Diego Pavia. They go into Auburn, Alabama and beat down Auburn, the team that had Alabama on the ropes that needed a miracle on fourth and 31. And here they are with their backup quarterback in a championship game on the road, playing lights out. Bed Good brings it from the two. And he's out to the 22, and we're down to the sideline. Amanda Gare, Amanda. Hey, guys, I've been down here watching Diego Pavia. Uh, it doesn't look as of right now that he's going to go back in this game initially. It is that right elbow he's been trying to get treatment on. He worked with the trainer, didn't go into the tent, uh, putting some ointment on it. However, the headset going back and forth between the other quarterbacks, one of the trainers saying, look, you guys are big time right now. You got to take this. Oh, this, uh, this is, in, I mean, this is storybook stuff right now. Pavia has been solid in the three touchdowns with his legs and with his arm, but that right elbow is an issue. And a true freshman, Blaze Berlowitz, getting his first snaps and throws of the season. Back to work now, Salter. And he's been outstanding. And let's see if Liberty has an answer. They have all night. C.J. Daniels continues to add what has been an enormous night. He's been lights out, Rich. People haven't been able to cover C.J. Daniels. He's just putting up ridiculous numbers. Seven catches for 145 yards and a touchdown so far this evening. 
Lucas in the backfield. Salter to the air, caught, and then bounced immediately is Sibley. And that's another situation where New Mexico State had an opportunity where I don't think Salter saw the defender right there that jumped up, but they respond, keeping everything inside and in front. Miles Rouser does a nice job there of not letting any yards after the catch there by Treyon Sibley. Second down, Lucas kind of reverses and will pick up six yards and the first down. Durville and Miller, the stop for New Mexico State. 35-35, just a wild ride of a championship game in Conference USA in Lynchburg, Virginia. Boy, we're getting our money's worth, man. Both of these teams are playing their lights out. We said coming back from halftime that whoever wins this game will have earned it, and they are not disappointing. Lucas has the edge and has speed to the 20, caught at the 15. Billy Lucas, the sophomore, the transfer from Duquesne. When you run the football effectively, it takes the defense's eyes with them. Everybody gets caught up inside, and it allows Liberty to set a wall on the edge. And defenses break down when you don't have a force player. That's a great play design and some blocking there on the perimeter. And Billy Lucas was able to take advantage of it. Back in the red zone where they were stopped the last time they were here. This is Bedgood. And Bedgood slams down to the seven. Jaden Robinson made the stop. Yeah, the Aggies, Rich, they lead the Conference USA in the red zone. Only 47% touchdowns. They allow people when they come down there really good. And they've stopped Liberty twice tonight on downs. One was a missed field goal. They'd love to be able to do that again here. Final seconds, third quarter. Crowd upset, wanting a penalty with a little bit of no flag and late no, interaction there. And no first down. And no time left in the third quarter. Woo! Liberty's over 560 yards in this game. They're unstoppable. New Mexico State has no answer for their offense right now. And they're on the doorstep here. On to the fourth. Conference USA Championship. 35-35. Liberty and New Mexico State. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network. This game. This game. 35-35 for a championship. It's crazy. It feels like New Mexico State won the first quarter. Liberty won that second quarter. And that third quarter was a tie. So what happens here in these last 15 minutes, and especially here in the red zone, on this next play could have a huge impact on who goes home tonight wearing the crown. Yeah, four down territory. They missed a field goal. They don't have a lot of confidence in that. So third and two here with Salter. Just outside the five. To hand it off, Billy Lucas. And that is a decision. A little bit of a clock issue that started late there, but a great stop there on third down, and Liberty's going to go for it. This is basically the distance for a PAT. So if you want to kick a field goal, this is about as safe as you can get. But this is the call of the night for Jamie Chadwell. And this offense. Billy Lucas. Salter over center. Less than a yard on fourth down. Salter right side. He's got it. And he lands at the two. It's a great job by Salter in that offensive line of running away from the shade and finding the hole in the defense. That's a breakdown for New Mexico State and a win for the Flames O-line. Salter has run for 77 yards on 10 carries. He's now the all-time leader in quarterback rushing yards in a season. They're in 22 personnel, two running backs, two tight ends. High snap, handoff, dive, touchdown! Lucas 
Liberty retakes the lead. Beautiful drive. Big strikes. Big plays. And another missed tackle. Sone Alpiu goes too low. And Billy Lucas takes advantage of it. Late flag. It appeared to be well after the score, but we've seen that on one occasion turn out not to be true. And he indicated in the direction of Liberty. The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play is over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number seven, offense. Ooh. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. We will try the down. Salter says, wait a minute. What I do? Well, remember, kickoff has been important in this game. Extra point is good. So they're going to kick this one off deep in their own territory. But a touchdown for Liberty and a big fourth down conversion. And then Billy Lucas takes it in. 42-35. Coach, thank you. Thank you. And it worked out for him. Lucas took it in. Seven-point cushion. Now, kicking off has been an issue for Liberty. Remember the ball that hit the up man that led to that last-second drive in the first half? And then the other ball that went out of bounds at the one that gave him the field position at the 35, and that started a touchdown drive. This kickoff from the 20 is very returnable. Akles trying to get to the outside. He does. He was knocked out of bounds right at the 33-yard line. Tomorrow night, 7 Eastern. This is a really good college basketball game. Number 20, Colorado State against Washington. Isaiah Stevens, one of the best point guards in the country for Colorado State. It's right here on CBS Sports Network. Chris, it's interesting. One of the big changes I've noticed half over half for New Mexico State. They had 122 rush yards in the first two quarters. Only six yards on three carries here in the second half. Blaze Berlowitz, they like his arm, but you feel like New Mexico State's going to have to have some success on the ground here in the fourth quarter if they want to win this game. If you're just joining us, Diego Pavia is out with an apparent elbow injury. Berlowitz has been brilliant in relief, and that's a catch right at midfield. And that is Donovan Foppel, 17 yards. Interesting play call here by Tim Beck. That was only a two-wide receiver route there. They sold out. Look at the top of your screen. Everybody else stays in the block, and they just run a post with an out route underneath it, and they get it to the wide-opening Donovan Foppel. Berlowitz, Berlowitz looks like an opposite of Pavia, who's better on the run outside the tackles. This guy seems more comfortable in the pocket. He's rolling here and throwing, and heck, he looks pretty good outside the pocket. Flags go down. That might be offensive yes, interference. Yeah, you see Liberty's coach is getting excited there. Brady made the catch. Fapel was ahead of him. Pass interference, number 17, offense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. After that great catch by Fapel, costly penalty. Here he is right there. That's a pick play. Now, he can just pretend like he's running a route and keep going, Rich, and still have the same effect there. That's just a mental error by 17. You like the effort, but poor execution, and it cost Jerry Kill and his team. It's an expensive penalty because it's not point of foul. It's back from the line of scrimmage, and it moves it all the way back to the 35. This is first and 25. Yeah, they're not able to take advantage, seemingly, of that great field position to start from Liberty's penalties. There'll be some pressure here on the freshman number nine in the center. Berlowitz, three-man rush. Stands in there, a little crossing route. Caught by Hudson. He's going to get maybe four. He's going to need more than that on second down and a little over 20. Tony Sanchez, the wide receiver coach, is not happy. Trent Hudson comes out. He's telling him he should have taken a deep route and making matters worth it. Looks like Hudson's banged up on that play. That's a double whammy. Now more confusion by New Mexico State. 
trying to figure out who's coming in, who's coming out. Well, this freshman quarterback has been very composed. This is his second drive. And they haven't been throwing over the middle. Everything's towards the sidelines. They don't want this kid to make a mistake. You need to get about half of this to give yourself a chance on third down. As time steps up, sideline throw, contact. A lot of contact. No flag, incomplete. Eli Stowers was the intended receiver. Brylan Green on the coverage. Yeah, he's their star player. I thought there was, Ooh. oh man, that is a terrible missed call there by these officials. The coverage has been tight, but that's way too tight and should have been pass interference. Even the true freshman <laughs> could see that. Weighed in on that. This is an enormous third down in yardage and in this game. And, and is this where you give up and keep the ball on the ground so you don't have a turnover? Running out of time and flush to the left side. Squares up, fires it up the field. It's caught! It's a first down! It's Brady to the 32! I guess that answer is no. Excuse me, Bryce Childress with the catch. Rich, this is incredible what Blaze Berlowitz is out there doing. Third and 20, whatever the heck it is. I thought the kid was going to run, be conservative, but it's probably the right decision. That Aggies defense has had no answer for Liberty offensively. They need this offense to stay out here, keep doing what they're doing. Berlowitz outside the pocket to the sideline. And he dances out of bounds right about the 27. That's a gain of about six. And you hear the Boo Birds there. They wanted to hold there right at the end. TJ Bush had beaten his offensive lineman and blocker up the field, but there was no flag. Maybe that's a makeup call for the pass interference that stayed in. Now Berlowitz to the sideline, and it's Eli Stowers, who was a quarterback transfer from Texas A&M, who's been playing wide receiver all year. Plays running back, plays quarterback, he does it all. Star Thomas with the carry. That was on second down at about four, and it looks like he got the four. Stowers is like the Taysom Hill of Las Cruces. Plays quarterback, plays running back, plays wide receiver. Just a dynamic athlete that was too good to not get him on the field. Boy, Tim Beck is really having to mix and match with these two backup quarterbacks. Diego Pavia has been out of the game for some time. An apparent right elbow injury. That's the area they were working on. Tim Beck's been calling a great game, giving him a chance. You wonder if Skyler McGee is going to bring some pressure and try to light up the true freshman. Now it's Berlowitz again. Nobody's showing pressure. They come with four. Berlowitz going to fire it towards the end zone. Contact. And it is almost caught. Jordan Parker for a moment had it. Good coverage there. Amarian Williams again. The coverage is so good that the back shoulder fades are proving to be the thing that gives this offense its best chance. He just kind of misjudges. And then the DB gets his hand up inside the face mask. That should have been a face mask right there by Amarion Williams. Man, they're letting a lot of stuff go on both sides here tonight. That was not a bad throw by the freshman. He's 7 of 10, 111 yards. <laughs> Second and 10. Here comes the pressure. They pick it up. Berlowitz flips it. End zone. Is it caught? Did he get it? Stowers? Or is it intercepted? Oh, equal rights to the football. Remember, this is a defense that leads the country in interceptions. And that's a touchback. That's an interception. That's the call on the field. They're going to have to review this to make sure that they get this right, Rich, because that so far could be the play of the game for Liberty. That's a great. defense that really feasts on, on interceptions. It's an interception resulting in a touchback. First down, Liberty. There's so much contact by both of these players. That's one-handed catch by Brandon Bishop. Timeout on the field. Bishop. Had it to his chest, then Stowers, and then down they go. 
And it's ruled an interception. What a huge play. 13. Jerry Kill pled his case to no avail that an interception. And now his New Mexico State Aggie defense needs a stop. 9.42 left. A one score game. Salter looking, firing to the right side. That's Quentin Cooley who has the first down. And he's got 11. Here's that throw in the end zone again in the wrestling match between these two. Brandon Bishop, number six, got a hand on it first. Yeah, that's kind of a tie goes to the runner. Remember, equal rights for the football. Well, who's the runner in that case? Well, Brandon Bishop gets the ball and goes to secure it first. It's a heck of an effort by Eli Stowers. I think you're right. First guy to have it gets the security. Bed good on an option pitch. Got speed, and he's off and running. 40-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds. Liberty's in a great spot now. Up seven, under nine minutes left and moving. Rich, they're so dynamic on the perimeter. And again, it's just option football. They catch the eyes, but some really good blocking out on the perimeter and the edge is making good plays even better and really taxing an Aggie defense. Bentley Hanshaw had a beautiful block out there in the slot. 33 yards. They lead the nation in that. Plays over 30. Play action. Salter fires sideline. That was a little high and a little hot. But I'm still stunned that C.J. Daniels didn't find a way to catch it because he's caught everything else that's been his way. Man, and C.J. Daniels has been matched up on Andre Seldon for most of the night. Seldon's the best cover corner on this team two year starter they trust him the transfer from Michigan came in and is their best tackler but Liberty's been targeting him all night and CJ Daniels for the most part has been winning that matchup take a look at those numbers yeah seven catches 157 that was supposed to be a reverse pitch and it blows up and Salter makes a positive play and breaks loose and he scores 35 yards Wow! What a game. What a game. Caden Salter feeling it. That was a broken play that turned into a touchdown. Superman doing his thing. Got that big space balls helmet. <laughs> Man, seven is nice. A broken play. He was looking to pitch on a reverse. That wasn't there. It started with this. The one-handed wrestling match picked by Brandon Bishop. Pitch not there, no problem. Caden Salter to the rescue, and a two-score lead now for unbeaten Liberty. For Liberty and their quarterback, Caden Salter. Yeah, Rich, great plays don't happen in a vacuum. Keep your eye on Bedgood, who gets a tremendous block. You're going to see the breakdown right here. Keyshawn Elliott, boom, misses a tackle there. But right there is Bedgood, who, bam, gets that block there that sets it up. What a tremendous effort. Watch 82 right there. That's incredible and what it takes to win championships. And remember, he was out of the game. He, he played for Coastal Carolina last year. He walked away, he didn't play in the bowl game. He thought he was done. And that is a touchback. His coach, of course, is Jamie Chadwell, who got the job here at Liberty. And they connected in February. And Chadwell said, come on. Are you really done? He said, Coach, I want back in. So he jumped in the portal. He came here. But first, he had to quit his job at State Farm. <laughs> he had to turn in his khakis. <laughs> and he has just been terrific. He's done everything for him. He runs the ball. He catches the ball. And on that play, his block sent Salter into the end zone. Championship effort. Nice job, 82. Now, big hill to climb for this freshman. Berlowitz, and just fires it out of bounds. 
New Mexico State has lost their star quarterback, Diego Pavia, not necessarily to a hit, but a, an apparent right elbow injury. Threw a long touchdown and never came back in the game. Rich, after rushing the ball 18 times for 122 yards for almost seven yards per carry in the first half, New Mexico State has only rushed the ball five times for 16 yards here in the second half. Tim Beck's job is hard, but now it's even harder because there's no run game. Berlowitz spins out of pressure, going to get the first down, up the field, out of bounds. Oh, wait a minute. Now they're going to mark him a little bit short. I think he was short there at the end, but he's very close. And this is what it's been. Does the reverse spin out, gets out high outside the pocket. He's trying to do the best he can to extend that ball. Timeout on the field for an injury to the defense. And that's awfully close. And it's going to be third down and a yard. This has been up and down. Big play after big play. And that kind of looks like a cramp the way they're working on Jay Hardy. And of course, a reminder of what's at stake. Liberty is number 24 in the college football playoff rankings. Tulane is two spots ahead of them. Group of five gets a ticket to a New Year's six and a big payday and a lot of exposure. Tulane plays tomorrow in the American Championship against SMU. Yeah, the highest ranked group of five champion gets an opportunity to be on the big stage with the big boys and that visibility and that windfall of the payout can be seismic for a program. Both teams are going bowling. Ah, it's third down. I'm not sure. It's right on this. Yes, has the first down. At the 35, that was Star Thomas. Jerry Kill is going bowling this year, and that's not something that happens at all at New Mexico State. Back-to-back -back years going to a bowl. Regardless of what happens in this game, but that illustrates your point, Aaron. They've shut down the run game. And interestingly, the Aggies are using tempo here. Berlowitz out of the pocket, flips it up the field, almost picks. Singleton in coverage. Forced incompletions is a stat that's tracked with DBs, and he leads the country with 48 of them. My goodness. Rich, when you're throwing late across your body as you're rolling out to the right, you just don't have the torque from the ground to be able to throw the ball with the velocity that you need there, and it tends to drift. And he's really lucky he didn't get that ball picked. Second and 10. Blaze Berlowitz had not thrown a pass until tonight. Usually in second 10 after completion, it's a high percentage run. They set up a screen, and Liberty was all over it. Bazell was right in the middle of it. He's got three tackles for loss. Bazell's been on fire tonight, and this is a ball that Berlowitz should never throw. Look at that. Everybody's reading it. Berlowitz got to throw that in the stands and give yourself a makeable third down. That was a loss of six yards, and now it's third and forever. Well, remember last drive, Berlowitz pulled he did see something him convert. right out of his ear. A third and 26. Long count, four-man rush. Lots of time for the true freshman. Sideline throw, it's caught. I don't know if it's a first down, but Hudson has it, and you're certainly going to go for it if it's fourth and one. It's awfully close, and again, Tim Beck targeting Trent Hudson along the boundary the outside they don't want this young man throwing the football over the middle of the field and we saw why on that previous third down play now here's an absolute opportunity for liberty to get this they are great on fourth down they're 10 of 13 this year and this is the first one they've had all night and they'll pick this one up that's Jamani Jones with the carry. That's a 11 of 14 on fourth down this year. Rich, that was an interesting play call. This was a direct snap right to the running back. Jamani Jones there. Who handled a reverse mesh. <laughs> it was, I don't know if that was the cleanest operation from a timing standpoint, but it sure worked. Yeah, it did. First and 10. 
Man, they're wide open. Five wides empty. Berlowitz. Oh. Pocket collapses. He escapes. Berlowitz racing to the 40. And spins down to the 37. It's a gate of nine, maybe 10. And it is 10. And it's right on the stick. That's a first down. Keep your eye at the top of the screen. Shiaz, Pete. They may have gotten away with a Man, hold. Man, they may have gotten away from a hold. I could not believe that Berlowitz didn't get sacked there. That should have been a penalty. Four man rush again. Berlowitz this time firing it. Flags everywhere. Ball is picked. And it's probably going to come back. And Brylan Green had the pick. Kobe Singleton was on the coverage and may have held. There's another flag that's late back up the field at about the 38. Got to hold your composure here in these situations. Yes, there's a lot on line, but every play from here on out matters. You want to play with emotion, Rich, but you can't play emotional. There are fouls by both teams on the play. Prior to the pass, holding, defense, it's a 10 yard penalty that includes an automatic first down. After the play was over, personal foul, number 66, offense. That is a 15 yard penalty. It'll be first down and 10 yards to go for New Mexico State after the enforcement of the penalties. One's a live ball and one's a dead ball. The one that I saw first was Kobe Singleton. He's got his arm around the back and preventing him. And that's what allows the interception there. And then Canepa, Louis Canepa, the right guard, just with a foolish penalty there out of frustration, costs his team some valuable yardage. Both these teams, with so much on the line, have to play clean here to finish this game. First and ten. Brady in motion. Berlowitz, little dump off. Caught there by Whitford, the big tight end. And he rumbles inside the 30, down to the 38. That's a first down. That's a gain of 13. It was a nice outlet pass there that Tim Beck dialed up. Everything was junked up in the middle, but again, these are outlet passes to the perimeter, the side of the field. They ran a mesh concept underneath some low crisscrossing routes, but in the end, he found the check down out on the perimeter to move the sticks. And again, a true freshman quarterback who hasn't thrown a pass all year, trying to bring him back. Fires at end zone there, and it's broken up. That was underthrown. Jonathan Brady was the intended receiver. Preston Hodge on the coverage. Flag down. Line of scrimmage, actually in the backfield. Jay Hardy with an incredible rush here. And it looks My like goodness. holds. Holding, number 77, offense, 10 yard penalty, first down. Keep an eye right here. Just a beautiful rush with a stab, no leverage there. By, Boy, they were both at each other's throats, right? My goodness. Well, football's a game of leverage, and defensive linemen, they want to get inside and underneath your pads. Jay Hardy won that rep because he got underneath and inside Jacob Golden. Heck of a rush there. This is first down and 20 after the penalty. Look out. Hit as he throws. Caught the middle sliding catch flags down at the 32 yard line Bellamy it's not enough for the first down but this penalty is yet to be discussed there are two flags and they both sit at the 32 man there was an incredible rush off oh, the that's outside an, that's an eligible man downfield ineligible receiver downfield Number 51, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. How does that happen? I don't know. A.J. Vipulu 
they haven't run the ball at all so it's interesting to me that they would dial up an RPO they've been going to five wides keep an eye on the left guard right there just runs a sift block and gets himself downfield and he's guilty as charged boy two bad penalties first and 25 there's been some rush off both sides now. Liberty's pass rush is heating up. Berlowitz gets away from it, tucks it again, up the field, takes a hit, and down he goes. 34-yard line. And that cuts some yardage off of it. And the clock now has melted under three and a half minutes. New Mexico State has their timeouts. But, man, they've, they're down two scores. The true freshmen trying to rally them. Yeah, they've got to hurry up this operation here really quickly. They do have all three timeouts, which they'll need for their defense to hopefully stop Liberty if they score a touchdown here. Blitz here. He's hit as he throws, flips it out, and it's incomplete. And he's hurt, and he's down. Berlowitz slow to get up. Left arm favored. Yeah, watch up here off this outside edge. The left tackle, Shiaz Pete, gets beat right off the snap. Tyron Dupree, the team leader, two, three plays in a row on this drive, is able to get home. And man, the young freshman Berlowitz is feeling that one. Luckily, threw the ball away. But again, you're third in Las Cruces with the game on the line, and you need two scores. Play clock, and they have to burn a precious timeout. Timeout, New Mexico State, their first of the half. This would be a 30-second timeout. Boy, everything that could go wrong has gone wrong for Jerry Kill's club. Once they got across midfields. Coming up next inside the studio, the team of experts will break it all down. And on CBS Sports Network, inside college football coming up. Highlights of this one, highlights of Washington, Oregon, previews of all the championship games tomorrow. New Mexico State has had just a miraculous season, but they are down against Liberty, who is looking for history, trying to go 13-0, trying to get to a New Year's Six. They'll need help from SMU tomorrow against Tulane. We've seen some miraculous plays by Blaze Berlowitz. You've got to give him time so that he can try to push this ball downfield. The back shoulder fades down the field have been what's been helping him out. I would keep the back end to help out with pass protection and try and put the ball up on the left side of the screen and either get a completion or a penalty here. And he doesn't need all of it. If he can get 10 to 12 yards, that works too. He's in trouble, fires it off the back foot, and a dive, is it a catch? No, it's incomplete. Stowers didn't get it cleanly. The difference in this game in this fourth quarter has been Liberty's pass rush. That ball drags yeah. right there, but what an incredible effort by Stowers. But that ball had to be an incredible effort because it came out way before Blaze Berlowitz wanted to because there was immediate pressure in his face. Well, it's down to this, and this feels like ball game here. Fourth and 15. True freshman quarterback seeing his first action all season. He's been outstanding here in the second half. Liberty shows blitz. And Berlowitz in trouble. Flushed, sets, throws down the field. It's caught! He had Lair still alive! That's Childress. One official says catch, the other races in, and now they're discussing at the two yard line. This was a catch, Rich. It looked like it with the naked eye. Just a great job of, oh, man. That's the part we didn't see. And that's why Liberty was pleading its case. Well, this could essentially, well, oh, yeah. This is going to be. I reviewed. don't know, though. This like is Like, the tough. ball's moving, but he maintains possession. And it looks like he has it. Ruling on the field is a completed pass. That ruling is under further review. If it right. moves and he has his hand under the ball, 
then he's got a shot. Man, Brylin Green, that left hand right here that makes that ball move. Man, it's so close. And the call on the field was catch. The angle from the inside to me gives the best look right here. It's not a clean stuck catch, so that's not going to help his case. His elbow comes down, Ooh, I but don't it know. seems like the ball helps that catch, Rich. I think they may overturn this. This is an enormous review. If it's overturned, it feels like curtains for New Mexico State. Yeah, and they burn that time out, leaving them only two. With the way Liberty's offense has been running, this is the leading rushing team in the entire country with 240 left. How about the throw by the kid? Unbelievable. They had Trent Hunsett underneath who went over the middle of the field, but once again, After there was the pressure. Game, it was determined that the receiver did not maintain control of the ball. First down for Liberty with the 34 yard line. And the party starts. Time out on the field. In Lynchburg, Liberty 49 35. Ram trucks built to serve. The overturn on the catch gives Liberty the ball, and with 240 left, a 49 35 lead. And the Flames are staring right now at 13 and 0 in a Conference USA Championship. And the pressure's on Tulane tomorrow against SMU. Control the controllables. And right now, the nation's leading offense on the ground is a first down away from being a champion. That's Lucas. 655 yards of total offense for Liberty tonight. It's been incredible. Just the stars of this ball game how equitable it's been. Everybody's stepping up, but there was one that stepped up more than anybody. The old Trapper is here, old Trapper player of the game. And Any guesses? Yeah, this guy's been terrific. He's Caden Salter, and he's lived up to everything we heard and saw on tape. He's been incredible tonight, 20 of 25, completing 80% of his balls, 319 yards through the air. But his legs as well, Rich, 11 rushes for 113 yards and another touchdown. He has been the absolute difference, not only for this team all season, but certainly here tonight. They passed the eye test. Oh, my right? gosh. I mean, at 24 in the college football playoff standings, they're two behind Tulane, who's at 22. Tulane's only played two teams with a winning record so far this season. And this is Salter, and he breaks loose. Up the sideline, it's a sprint. Hit the deck. Salter! Now that's great, and that's the first down. But <laughs> stay in bounds, young man. What a beautiful play call. Completely fooled New Mexico State. Willie Korn doing what Willie Korn does best, and then the athleticism takes over. 52 yards. And if you're Liberty here, look, you, it, it feels like you've got this thing secure. Uh, the math tells you on first and goal, look at that, 1,200 yards. They want to put it in the end zone. I mean, that's, look. Was the ball out? No. As Lucas held on to it. The ball does come out here. They've had exchange issues all evening. And man, that ball comes out on the ground. But Rich, to win a championship, man, you got to be good and a little bit of lucky. And Liberty is certainly both. A team that has struggled all year long with fumbles has another one. But it bounces right back into Billy Lucas's arms. Yeah, they lost 11 over the season. All right, second and goal here. Well, New Mexico State. Yeah. 
Here's a question for you. I mean, look, they could run this out, right? But does a touchdown help them in this formula for the college football playoff? It's hard to say, but this is the world that we live in now. Without the divisions, without the tiebreakers and all these different things, we don't necessarily know, but the BCS and the computer rating and all that stuff does seem to make a difference. But good job by... Jerry Kill not calling a timeout. This game has been decided. Let them enjoy their moment. Yeah, and it looks like Liberty is uh, of like mind here. Looks like victory formation. First year for Jamie Chadwell here. And that will do it. Number 24 Liberty in a thrilling matchup with New Mexico State will win this game 49-35 and wait till tomorrow to see if they've got a shot at a New Year's Six. There's nothing else Jamie Chadwell and his team could do. They ran the table perfectly and beat a very good opponent, opponent in New Mexico State and they are the 2023 Conference USA champions. Hats off to this team, this program, and the entire Conference USA. And you know what? For New Mexico State, they're going to go bowling. And Jerry Kill. 12 teams already.